can you count sperm at home under a microscope? I mean, the answer is technically yes, you could do it with the same level, per level of precision they do in professional laboratories, but is that pragmatic for most people to be doing? I would say absolutely not. And the reason is because it's really complicated to count sperm. There are so many extraneous factors that go into counting sperm that have to be accounted for. Shout out to the World Health Organization for releasing this 270 page manual on sperm analysis. The problem with counting sperm yourself is that there are so many factors that you have to control for in order to get a standardized answer that can actually be compared with other people's results and your results over time. So for example, the sperm is not homogeneously distributed throughout the ejaculate. The very first portion of ejaculate that's put out has the majority of the sperm in it, and then the rest is a bunch of uh, essentially seminal fluid and whatnot. There are also a bunch of proteins contained within the seminal fluid that have to be broken down, uh, at least thankfully naturally, by the proteus enzymes that are inside of the seminal fluid. But these proteins can trap sperm and make it so that they're not in the right places. Also, sperm move around, right? So they can move up and down in your sample. So depending on where you draw your sample from, even within this little tiny, tiny little bit of liquid here, can greatly determine by you know many orders of magnitude the amount of sperm and the sperm count that you ultimately get. The amount of arousal that you have, the length of time since the last ejaculation, and even the amount of total ejaculate fluid that you create can completely change the numbers. And so all of those things in a laboratory setting have to be accounted for. And that's why as a, as a patient going to a fertility clinic, you're given this long list of requirements that you're not able to do certain things before you, you take that test. But what I think you can do at home just by yourself is that you can get a general estimate for what your overall sperm, sperm number is and if it's a problem at all, right? I mean, if you put this thing under a microscope and you look and there are basically, no matter where you look, there are sperm everywhere like you probably don't have as much of a need for concern on if there is something wrong with your sperm count uh, um, compared to somebody that, you know, they, they put their sample on there and then they look and they're having kind of a hard time finding sperm. At least from my, what I've seen, you pretty much can't go somewhere without seeing sperm cells. And this is also good for if you, for example, had a vasectomy, it's been a couple years later, you're having a bunch of anxiety around whether or not your tubes have reformed back together and you just want some peace of mind, you could look at your, your semen under a microscope and see just that there, you can't find a single sperm cell. And if you do find even one sperm cell, that's a cause for alarm and you definitely need to go get that checked out if you don't want to be having another kid. If you've gotten a vasectomy, the way in the lab that they determine for sure that there are no sperm in your sample is that they do they do put it in a centrifuge to concentrate all of the cells in the sample just to make sure that there is absolutely not even a single one in the entire amount of ejaculate but if you're okay with having a like a less high rate of positivity on that, you can just look at any sample of your ejaculate without having centrifuged it. And if there's, if you can't find a single one for after searching for a while, like you're probably okay, right? The other thing to consider about sperm count is that recent research is finding that it's not quite as important beyond a certain point. The If you have a sperm count that's above a certain threshold, it doesn't really contribute to the rates of pregnancy as much as other factors do, such as motility of the sperm and the health of the sperm and the overall process of uh, coitus in this case. And um, you know, it takes both parties to, to really make things work here. Another evaluation you could absolutely do at home under your own microscope is to look at how many modal sperm are in your sample. If you take a look at this thing and there are no sperm swimming around that you can see whatsoever and you pretty diligently followed that World Health Organization document on how to do this, you should probably go get a full clinical evaluation. I mean, that, that is cause for concern as well. But if you, if you have just a ton of sperm that are swimming around, no problem, and you're also um, you know, not entirely positive that you're having fertility issues in the first place, you're probably fine. You probably don't need to get an assessment. If you take a look at the World Health Organization document, they have a couple of categories for assessing the sperm movement that you have going on here. And this is significantly simpler to do than sperm counting. So you could, you could absolutely follow this and make a determination on your own of what your, what your sperm movement metrics are. They also have a good section about sperm agglutination. 
um, I believe is how you pronounce that, um, essentially how many of your sperm are sticking together and are therefore non-motile. Um, so for example, you can have situations where the, the tails get bound up together or the heads are stuck together and they're not separated. Um, and if you, you know, have a significant amount of sperm that just can't move around or are stuck together, obviously they're not gonna be able to, to fertilize anything. Um, so you can, you can also do an assessment based on, on this chart and in this section that goes over how to actually, how to actually um, graph that and determine that. Another thing to mention about sperm count is that there's this kind of wide notion that fertility, like fertility rates are going down, which is true. And it's because sperm count in men is also going way down. But if you look at the, the research and the data, they're finding that there is a very reasonable plausible explanation for this, and that's that the, the standards and the procedures for actually counting sperm is just becoming more accurate and more consistent between labs. Hence, you know, these World Health Organization documents that are extremely thorough and extremely particular in doing that. So I, of course, don't recommend that you do an at-home analysis to make actual family planning decisions or any real decisions about your health. You should go get an actual clinical evaluation to make those decisions. But if you're just curious or you just want peace of mind or you just want to start the discovery process, you can absolutely do this at home. And if you're curious what kind of a microscope that you need to look at sperm yourself, you can see that video here. Check it out, I made this video just for you.